believe it's showing today. Welcome back. It is time to have the conversation that I've been looking forward to for a good month or so since I found out about the then impending trip to Washington, D.C. to pursue a legislative agenda and continue her work in advocacy on behalf of patients for whom medical cannabis is literally a godsend. And she's back. She's looking full of energy, and she's already made great friends with my dog. This is Christine Stenquist. How I'm are good. you? I'm good. Welcome I'm good. back. I Thank see you. you two are. We're buddies. You're bo now bonded forever. You know, he met me in the in the room. Right. <laughs> like, oh, are you coming back? I am coming back. So we are best friends now. It's so true. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing really good. You've been busy. I have. Just got back from D.C. last week, and um, that was pretty exciting. I bet it was. Now, was this this was was this the first time that you've gone with with a uh, with a schedule and an agenda? No, no. Oh this wow! Is, this is I, I didn't <laughs> no, realize that. No, not me. This is I guess third time. Third time. I've there you go. Been back to D.C. advocating and lobbying. Um, second time with Americans for Safe Access, which is the national organization I'm affiliated with. So they had a unity conference where they bring in researchers, doctors, patients, advocates wow. from across the country and across the world. And we get a week long of science, of policy, lobbying, experts, just all kinds of information. And then so the cool. following week we go and we lobby our congressional delegates. And it, it, it sounds like I, you, you kind of presaged my question, which was when you say, okay, well, here's my big goal, right? Mm -hmm. I, I always do everything at the whiteboard. So I'm picturing right. you being at the whiteboard and saying, go to Washington and advocate, and then to, to fill out the rest of that outline. But I guess in this kind of a situation, you were kind of, kind of in the channel as your first few days of activity right. were focused on consciousness raising and education and that kind of thing. And then... Right. Put it into action immediately. Exactly. It's it's been it's an interesting little setup that, that Americans for Safe ha Access have having the advocates come to D.C. Those advocates are already in their own states doing what it is I do here. Right. So what they do is say, hey, you guys are doing a fantastic job there. Let's push the federal efforts. And not only are they doing the federal efforts, but Americans for Safe Access last year was working on the U.N. efforts and. So am I. So wow. I started out with I thought I was going to do some policy changing in my own state, and it just grew bigger. And I saw that the change needed to happen globally. Honestly, it needs to get to that point where we move this policy in a direction we can really actually do research. So that's that's what we're hoping for right now. We've got three bills that um, there's a lot of bills actually. Of course. But there's three bills that I'm truly babysitting and watching and advocating for. I'll tell you a little bit about that if that's sure, okay. Sure, of course. Um, HR 1227. 1227 is um, the federal. It's it's federally reschedule not rescheduling but actually decriminalizing yes. cannabis. So it it leaves it to the states to decide how they want to create their policy. It just makes it federally decriminalized, and that's what we really truly need um, to get sort of these other. Um, experiments going in other states. The other bill that we're watching and then we're really truly concerned about because it affects states that already have implementation mm -hmm. is the uh, CJS uh, amendment which is the Farnbacher the Ronbacher Farr amendment okay. and expires April 28th so when I was back in DC we were asking our congressional delegates to please honor that amendment. What that amendment does it prohibits the federal government from going into states that already have medical cannabis. So we don't want states that already are complying with the amendment to have any replications of anything happening to those patients. We want them to be able to have safe access. And then the final one, the one that we're really excited about because me and Senator Madsen went back last year and advocated for this, is the CARES Act. Um, they're bringing it back again. Last year it was sponsored by Cory Booker, Jill and Brand, Rand Paul, and several others. This year I am so happy to sort of announce that we have one of our own congressional delegates on that co-sponsoring, which is fantastic. Wow. And I have to I have to announce it. I mean, I do. So Senator Lee is has agreed to be a co-sponsor wow. on our CARES amendment, which wow. is amazing. When he sat down with Senator Madsen and I last summer, he was very compassionate to what was going Sorry. on. 
and he is a strong supporter in states' rights. And this bill really honors states' rights, giving that ability for the, the states to, to create legislation that best suits them, because every state is different. True. So those wow. are really exciting bills. Congratulations, Thank that's you. really great. And, and I have to say, and I, I joked about it a little bit during the, during the open, but bipartisanship, reaching across the aisle, yeah. there are a ton of cliches and, and sayings, but in the end, to be able to have a, a success mm -hmm. like this where, you know, I mean, Mike Lee's a, right, he's got a rep, mm -hmm. but he's a human being too. Well, that's the thing about this particular issue. It crosses party lines, and the reason why it crosses party lines is because cancer doesn't care if you're a Republican. Cancer doesn't care if you're a Democrat or a Libertarian or if you even follow politics, nor does epilepsy, nor does MS, nor do any of those other ailments that people suffer from. So I really personally don't care what party you're affiliated with. If you're with me, you're with patients. And that's kind of where some of these legislators are coming from. This is a compassionate issue. This isn't a, a party issue. And that's, right. that's where I think we're getting more and more support. We see it happening within our own congressional delegates. But even, even with, uh, across the country, a new poll came out where almost at 80% of the population is in support of medical cannabis. The tide has turned. We're at 44, now 45 states that have some form of medical cannabis programs. 29, 28 have wow. um, whole plant access, the other have CBD. So we, we're, at, we're beyond a tipping point. So what we really need to watch and advocate is to get the, the current cabinet to understand that this is medical access and to honor, we need Trump to honor his, his promise that he was supportive of medical cannabis and we need him to honor that for those patients that are needing that access. And it occurs to me that with these overwhelmingly positive numbers on these poll responses from Americans mm -hmm. that I'm, I guess I'm heartened in that we know that we can't necessarily trust yeah. promises that, that Trump made during the campaign. But that being said, he watches polls, he, he watches opinion crazy, yeah. crazy close. And it mm -hmm. seems like he's being pushed in a more moderate direction with some of the moves that are being made in the White House staff, et cetera. He, he could be he could be an ally. He could. And I think I, what I try to remind people is, above all else, Trump is a businessman. Yes. It's bad business to close this, to shut down cannabis. It, tr it just truly is. I mean, yeah. we, w there's a lot of money to be made there. We're seeing a lot of infrastructure now being ha happening in Colorado because they have all this taxes coming in from cannabis. Mm -hmm. You see schools being repaired. You see research facilities opening up. You see all kinds of things happening. And I, so I think if he looks at it from a business angle, he'll see that it's, it's profitable to keep, keep this going. So. Was there any discussion in, in your time with your colleagues about what's happening in Canada? I, you know what, I haven't actually dived into what's going on in Canada, but I do know that, you know, they're, well, the, they're making progress. Yes, and they're it sounds like there legal. may be, and I, yeah. I, I want to say a referendum. I could be wrong, but I think they're, they may be moving toward a referendum. In any case, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, what I've read, and I haven't yeah. done a deep dive either, but from what I'm seeing, that's really in the offing is, an, is a national right. position. Right. And of course, I, I think that in my uh, understanding, Justin Trudeau has been sympathetic in statements that he's made. I don't know how sort of fully in support he is. I'm right. sure there's politics involved there too. I, and I'm but. sure there is too. I mean, I, 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 I always like to get the advocates take on it because politicians right. are politicians in right. every country. Right. And so while we think he's charming and, and wonderful on this issue, we may not know the intricacies that are going on in Canada. So well I'm said. hopeful that, that the patients there continue to get the access that they deserve. Um, I know globally this issue is, is just sweeping across the world. It, and it so really is, like you say, the tipping point is now. It is. I, I get messages from people across the world saying they've heard my story, they've read my story. Wow. There's a woman in Australia, there's a woman over in Japan, of all places. There's, there's people all over the place that reach out and then wow. they're just really curious about what's going on. And so it, it's, it's fun to share. It's also a little, it's sad. It's, it's truly hard. You know, um, I get 
messages from people in our state begging for help for medicine and access and it's just not something I can provide sure other than continuing the advocacy work to get legislation passed so that's what we continue to do it's 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 a hard battle it truly is especially this last legislative session to have a research bill pass that allocated funds for um, a product that isn't actually going to be grown in the state or isn't being transported we we looked at that bill and really saw that it turned out to be a vendor bill that it's actually benefiting other companies who have product in place and now we use taxpayer funds to to do that research it's really upsetting so I want us to get to an honest place with patients having access and I think I think the ballot initiative is where we're going to have to go and we're moving on that and that's what we're going to see happening next month hopefully language will be filed and signature gathering will wow. start happening in the summer so it's it's time it's time for the people's voices to be heard the other thing that's very encouraging about that to me is that you go to your polling place yeah. and of course now we metaphorically pull right. the curtain right. uh, behind us as we go in but I, I'm very curious I, I, I have a hunch that there is a great more uh, support great deal more support than what a lot of people may be yep. comfortable or may be able to say publicly but of course that's that's yeah. the beauty of the ballot box is you fold yeah. that ballot and put it in <laughs> so yep. hopefully uh, like I you say, uh, this compassionate issue. It is. It in, and we ran some polling during the legislative session to see what the temperature was, to see if we really should be moving forward on a ballot initiative. Because we really don't want to bring something into this state if, if the people aren't wanting it. Of course. You know, and that is not, the polls showed the people want this. We had, the polls were pretty high in their numbers, the highest we've seen yet. Wow. And we're not ready to disclose those numbers, but as time goes on, we're going to be sharing that with the public. Look, th this is what they want and we're answering we're truly answering a call of the people and it, that's exciting when you can have that my, sort of rallying cry together it's really exciting well I can I can say with confidence that in the time that you and I have known each other mm -hmm. uh, we met right here in the studios of Park City Television yep. and I'm I'm grateful for our friendship and association and it has been an absolutely gratifying thing to see the journey that you have taken N knowing your backstory the, all of what happened from before day one of your first visit here to talk about your work mm -hmm. to talk about your experience and it feels to me like like there's wind in the sails there is for this for this journey and for mm -hmm. you yeah so great Let's have a cheers. Cheers, absolutely. Cheers to your work, and we are grateful for the significant amount of time that you have put into this. I, I know it's turning into something really beautiful, but I know that it's also a gigantic sacrifice. It is. But and we it's so thank worth you. It. Thank you. For all of those sacrifices. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. How is that jalapeno margarita that Ooh. we're going to get a recipe of in just a couple of minutes. I'm excited. I'm excited for Very talk good. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have anything else that we need to cover? Do you, no. you have Truce? Uh, Truce has got some or? activities that are coming up. We're okay. going to be announcing them on our Facebook page. We have okay. some documentary viewings and panels that we're looking at. There's winds and talks of a concert coming this summer. A oh, benefit wow. concert. So be fun. We'll announce I'm that so as excited. things get closer. We have special guests that are going to be coming into the state to do panels and all kinds of stuff. So we've got wow. exciting year. This is going to wow. be a really exciting year this year and into 2018 because it is a it is phenomenal work that we're doing now. It really is. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for all you do and it's always great to see you. Thank you, Terry. All right, you guys, that is Christine Stenquist. I'm so grateful that she shares her message with us here at Park City Television. And hopefully, take a look at the Facebook page for Truce Utah and get more information how you can be a part of the solution of helping patients in their needs for palliative treatment. We are going to take a break. I think we might do some weather. I'm very excited to get on the Blender Bike. More on that in a minute. We'll be right back.